Hey guys, I'm not sure if you have seen any of the opening ceremony for the Paris Olympic Games 2024, but I just wanted to bring a few things up today. And it's the mockery and the scoffing of Jesus Christ. And if you have a look in this first photo I'm showing you, this is the opening ceremony, the stage, front and centre where the flags are. They have, you can see, a golden calf. And we'll look into what the golden calf represents when we're talking on a biblical note and if you were trying to offend or bring to the wrath of the Lord Jesus Christ, these are the kinds of things that as a nation you would be doing. And I'd just like to add here that the only God that I see being made fun of and, and, and you know, disrespected here is Jesus Christ. You do not see the other gods of the other religions of this world being mocked at the Olympic Games, which is a worldwide event. Look at this one. This is a parody of the Last Supper. Front and centre on the table, we have a naked man painted blue who is supposed to represent the little G god of wine, Dionysus, the Greek god Dionysus. So they've put Dionysus, the Greek god, on a platter in front of a woman wearing a crown and her group, which are supposed to be representing the Last Supper. It is a mockery of Jesus Christ. A parody of the Last Supper was part of the act at the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. Now, we talk about these key words that are being used, inclusion, um, what's some other words? I don't know, not to offend people. Who would do this? If you did this and mocked the God of Islam, there would be such an outcry in this country. It's not funny. Let's have a look. I want to show you something, guys. I want to show you the scriptures and how we know that we are in the last days. I'm going to read from the KJV because I know a lot of people only trust the KJV and that's fine. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 3 to 4 in the KJV read, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And I just want to read this in a more modern tongue, which is the New International Version, the NIV, reading 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. So these people are laughing and scoffing and mocking anybody today that believes that Jesus Christ will indeed return. As his word says, they mock, they scoff, they follow after their own evil desires. They follow after the world. The world has a system. The world has a system and most people, worldly people, love the system and they love their lives. They love their lives here. And we are told in the scriptures, guys, we are told in the book of Revelation, talking about these times, come out of her, my people, so you shall not suffer in her plagues. Come out of her, come out of the world system, come out of this world. Look to Christ. Yes, he will come back. Let the mockers mock, let the scoffers scoff, let the ungodly evil people do as they will because they're going to do it anyway. All we can do is show them 
that God is a loving God, God is a patient God, God wants none of them to suffer his wrath. He wants all of them to turn from the world and to turn to him now. And he still in these last days, these last hours, has the love and goodness in his heart to forgive them. And I want to show you another thing. That golden calf, that's also mocking Christ, scoffing at the God of the Bible. And I want to read you this. The golden calf, the idol worshipped by the Hebrews during the period of the Exodus from Egypt in the 13th century BC and during the age of Jeroboam, first king of Israel in the 10th century BC, mentioned in Exodus 32 and 1 Kings 12 in the Old Testament, worship of the golden calf is seen as a supreme act of apostasy, the rejection of a faith once confessed. The figure is probably a representation of the Egyptian bull god Apis in the earlier period and to the Canaanite fertility god Baal in the latter. But I can tell you that this idol worship, these gods, these many gods that go under all different names for the different eras and the different uh, the different peoples that, that worship them, they are all the one same. They are worshipping Satan. Satan who is Lucifer, the devil, the red dragon, the serpent or the snake in the Garden of Eden. He is the one in the same God. He comes in many faces. He is a God of many faces, Satan. He is a shapeshifter. He can come as an angel of light. He can come as a slithering snake. He can come as a big red dragon seeking to devour you. Or he can come like a lion, creeping around like a lion, seeing who he can devour. And have a think about that. The lion of Judah is Jesus. Jesus returns as a lion. Satan is trying to mock Jesus and he is literally trying to come back in Jesus' place. And this is what's happening now. The world system is rising. The Antichrist is rising. The artificial intelligence has risen. And this is what was required to bring about the mark of the beast and the worship of the beast and his image and the whole world that marvels after him will be forced to take his mark and forced to worship him. And those who don't want to worship him will end up worshiping him worshiping him anyway if they take his mark because they will lose control of themselves and they will be forced to worship him and if they take that mark and go down that track then they cannot come back from that and they will end up in the lake of fire with the beast who is satan and the false prophet and that's what the bible says and the bible is true no matter how much you don't want to believe it how uncomfortable it makes you in your skin your sinful skin I know I have sinful skin myself and I know how uncomfortable it can be. But I've got to a point as a, as a mature woman and a mature Christian is I no longer want a lot of this world. There's certain things I still struggle with in my sin and I, I assume will continue to struggle in until the Christ returns and makes me new in the incorruptible body in the eternal body that no sin, no more. And when my sin is separated from me and cast so far away from me that it will no longer be remembered, then I will be perfect like Christ is because he will make me perfect. And until that day, he will cover me in his blood whenever I stumble. And Lord, I pray that you help me to become more like you every day And please, Lord, give me courage in these last days as Christianity and Christians around the world will be persecuted in whatever way until you return. And I pray, Lord, that you return in the nick of time to snatch us up out of here before your wrath flows freely. (laughs) And anybody listening, I pray that you turn to Jesus before the wrath of God pours out on this world And if you want to hear about the wrath that's going to get poured out, it's in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, it describes the wrath of God. And there's a lot of prophecies I may not understand, but there is 
what there is a lot of words of God that I do and I clearly understand what is coming to this world for the sins of the world have piled up so high that the Lord is going to get down off his throne and he is going to pour out the final judgments. So I pray we all turn to Christ today. No matter what you've done, it's okay. You can always turn from your sin and you can always turn to Jesus.